Hello. Harry here. Currently, we're driving towards what might just be one of the toughest running challenges I've ever taken on. If it wasn't clear already, I quite like running. But I harbour a particular fascination with endurance and the concept of running far. This has taken many forms, from taking on the 102-mile Cotswold Way in four days in 2015 to spending thousands of hours out in the wild exploring on foot. And with the start of a new year, I felt it might be time to take on a new form of endurance challenge. 500 kilometres in one month. Or 310 miles. Now I'm definitely not a mathematics guy, but the numbers actually break down quite nicely. The 500k will be broken up over 31 days, which works out at almost exactly 10 miles a day. That's 16.1 kilometers every 24 hours. The challenge comes not so much in the individual day, but the repetition of day after day after day. One could, for example, take a rest day every seventh day, but this would mean each day of running gets another mile and a half added and becomes 11.5 miles. No matter which way you look at it or try to break it down, it's tough. Very tough. If anyone watching this ever decides to have a go, it really will be quite fascinating to see how they choose to tackle it. I will of course be documenting this 500k attempt and releasing a series of videos around it. At this point, I do not know if it will be achievable, or if much will go to plan at all, but we can try. It's a big undertaking, but one that captivates me. 500k, one month. As the clock struck midnight, it had begun. Just to give you an idea of how cold it is this morning, this is actually frozen solid inside the bottle, but it is January. This was expected. The tap in the back of the van has frozen solid. One thing immediately that I have to own up to, 31st of December, yesterday, I decided it'd be a good idea to do a hill session. So I'm feeling that a little bit in the legs already. That was a bad idea. I've also sort of enveloped myself in various compression to protect as much as possible. As I stand here by the jog-on van waiting for my watch to connect, I can't really give you an idea about how I'm feeling. It's so absurd, the fact that when I've completed today's 10 mile run, that there will be another 30. It's slightly beyond me. And so, with the winter darkness approaching, we set off to begin the longest running challenge I've ever taken on. For the first day's run, I've opted for flat, easy canal path. Nothing too strenuous, just five miles out and five miles back. And as we reach the eight kilometer mark, or halfway of the first day's run, we actually approach a very, very fascinating tunnel. A tunnel with a history that's probably worth doing a running through history jog on episode about. You know, I think one of the nice things about this kind of challenge is it allows you to go and explore places. 31 lots of 16K or 10 miles, however you want to look at it. That gives you real scope to go and explore different castles, different ruins, canal paths, forest, hills. And also because of not much driving with the exception of the bit in the jog on van, can actually listen to some audio, catch up on some podcasts. And I want to choose. Hello, Harry here. And welcome or welcome back to another episode of Jog On. So we're just going through 11 kilometers and already rediscovered that sort of rhythmic trance that one gets into when running these steady long distances. The night was closing in and disappearing was the light to film. We've actually watched the day start to change. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Can probably barely even see that, but that's about to hit 16.1 kilometers. One hour and 41 minutes after having set off, we returned to complete the first day's run. There was no going back now. Good morning, this is day number two. Only 29 runs to go after this, although we've decided to start a little bit earlier so that we're not running into the dark. As you saw yesterday, it was turning into dusk when we arrived back at the jog on van. But because yesterday went well, it was nice and flat on the canal path, I thought today, let's take a different section of canal path and run five miles out and five miles back. What time is it now? It's obviously 11.30. 11.30, I put yeah. adding an hour on. You know what yeah. I'm filming right now? There's no bar. Literally filming and you're going, I need the bathroom right now. <laughs> After the absurdity of all that mud yesterday, we've upgraded to trail shoes. Well, I can tell you right now, it's a beautiful morning. The plan today, much as I'm sure it'll be every day, is just to go very gently, and I'm gonna put a podcast on. It's nice now we're doing it a bit earlier, because there isn't that sort of ticking clock of, it's getting darker, we need to get back before it gets too dark. Morning. Morning. This next section would be run just by myself. All right, see you later, bye bye. And now the rest of this run, will be solo. A run that turned out to have a lot of low bridges. This is the lowest bridge ever. And then 
it became ridiculous. I've just got to show you this. Look how low this bridge is. Mind your head. Mind your chest. This is insane. So as I hit 8.05 kilometers on this run, that will be the halfway turnaround point. Here we go. Turning, turning, turning. Marvellous. And we head back five miles that way. We've just passed 13.1 kilometers. Just 3K to go. And it is a beautiful day. At 14K, I was rejoined. You finished your session then? Yeah. You can't believe the speed I'm holding, can you? <laughs> I'm 540 per kilometer here. Eh? How was that? Yeah, so I feel all right, but I'm aware that I'm going to feel a bit sore in the evenings. It's, yeah. it's inevitable. So we're just coming up to it. 16.08, 16.09 now. And that is 16.1 kilometers. And the second day complete. Another slightly questionable outfit for today, and I am a little bit chilly, but there is some theory behind that, and that is that by the time that I'm running, I'll hopefully just be about the right temperature. A few stretches by the van, and it was time to run. So here we are, 3rd of January, day number three, and yet another 10 miler or 16 kilometer run. This time, a small loop, and then around an airport. Let's go, here we go again. To give you some perspective, GB athlete Louise, who has been joining me for these runs, had already run the entire 10 mile route earlier. So by the time we would be finished, she'd have casually clocked up a total of 20 miles. Madness. We briefly went on a charge and Louise got carried away. It's said she's still chasing them to this day. The last park run here was a 2028. I can definitely say that today is a little bit slower. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but over there there's a Costa coffee drive through. People are addicted, willing to sit in a queue of over 15 cars just to get a shot of espresso. Andrew, please, can we go get coffee? There's a huge queue, darling. I need my coffee. Whilst, yes, we are now by the side of a road, it's actually quite nice to have the consistency of just some firm tarmac and a path to follow. We passed relevant graffiti. I think by day 21, those will be my thoughts exactly off the road and onto the beaten track. We've just discovered that for some reason my Garmin is now recording in miles. Not sure how that change happened. We finally hit the canal and the sun's just poking out from behind the clouds. We briefly watched a plane take off before rolling into the finish. Here we go. And that is 10 miles or 16.1 kilometers. Back at the jog on van and my legs now are a little bit sore. Another day, another 16K. Mixing it up a little bit today, slightly different route. We have come out to the forest to do a five mile loop, obviously twice. Reason for the five mile loop is quite simply, it just means less chance of me getting lost. And also the amount of forest area we've got to work with, 10 miles is still a long way. Essentially it was easier to just about get a five mile loop in and then we can do that two times over. I've opted to not go with the Ultra Vest today and in fact, to go with a belt. The reason for this is something that I haven't actually really mentioned so far, but I've been having quite a bit of problem with the top of my ribs, some bruising and sore points around here, but the vest certainly wasn't helping to let it recover. So that's why we've opted for the belt today. Underfoot was clearly going to be rather sodden. Do you know, I was just thinking it might actually be quite demoralizing on today's run, being a two looper, but at the halfway point, of course, I'm actually gonna have to come back past the coziness of the van and keep going. Day four run had begun. Well, just a quick update, two and a half kilometers in, got a little bit of spitting rain, uh, but generally feeling okay, considering the stiffness I felt in my legs at the end of yesterday. My legs are a bit sore now. I've woken up, dare I say it, slightly fresher than expected. No music, no podcast today, without wishing to sound too corny, just listening to the sounds of the forest. That was corny. I don't know if you can hear that, but the sound of the wind picking up, whipping through the tops of the trees, it's quite remarkable. Some of them really swaying. That's not disconcerting at all, watching a 50 foot tree sway above you. The terrain was getting worse. And this is what happens when they sway too much. Look at that, completely snapped there. But I think this route is already winning the award for the boggiest underfoot. Wow, brought down in the high winds. Look at that. This is muddy. Well, this is a little bit different from the canal. And then a child appeared. I've somehow got into a race. I need to establish my dominance. Try this then. Oh, see you later. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> that happens every once in a while. Some child goes, I should race you. And you have to make them remember that they'll get to be that fast in a few years, but not yet. I shouldn't have accelerated there. The path was blocked. Is it felling work? Yeah. Thanks very much. There is the jog on van. Hello. 9.1K, not quite what was expected. Looking for 8K. It's all good though. Just make some minor adjustments on this second loop. Make it a little bit shorter. Looking for about 7K on this loop. And that will bring us in at 40 miles total so far, or 64 kilometers. Just a little bit of extra information on pacing, if you're interested at all. Obviously for this entire challenge, as I have, 
have mentioned I'm running at what for me is a very, very steady pace. But what is that pace? So for every 5K I'm running, I'm running somewhere roughly in that bracket of 29 to 32 minutes to keep it super, super steady by just running mile after mile after mile after mile. One kilometer, that would be nice. The strangest thing, there's music coming from that hedge. I just turned my cap round because the wind actually blew it off. That's why I look like this. And so with just a few more meters to go, we wind to a close on the fourth day, on the 4th of January. That is 16.1 kilometers. Well, it is early, early days, but I feel all right. Let's do it all again tomorrow, yay! Hello, Harry here, and welcome to the fifth day. Today's run has two purposes. First of all, of course, to complete yet another run, but also to deliver something quite special. <sighs> I don't know why, but today feels particularly cold. I zip the special package into the back of my vest and said goodbye. Bye-bye. And we're off. It's absolutely freezing, and we head to do yet another 10 miler to bring it to a total of 50 miles. I recorded a message for the receiver of the package. Morning, I'm on my 10 miler, so what I'll do is I'll just let you know once I've dropped off the package and whether I've shoved it through the letterbox or left it somewhere near your doorstep or something like that. I've turned the music up a little bit more because I can hear the package in the back jostling around. I'll tell you what, I am so pleased to see this section. It's a little turn off from the canal. I was actually quite concerned that I was going to run straight past it because it's quite easy to miss. The more hawk-eyed amongst you may have actually noticed that this is the loop that I did on the third run, but I'm doing it in reverse. And then, out of nowhere, the mother video called me to thank me for a garden centre voucher. We'll be able to go and spend it in the next seven weeks. So brilliant. Thank you very much. Answered the phone to the mother, got distracted and ran down the wrong road. Morning. <laughs> the queue is still very much there for Costa Coffee. Look at it! You're all addicted! I can't blame them, I never used to like coffee that much, but one day, all for coffee! Well, they might be getting a cake with it. And then I saw a man with a chair on the pavement. Well, in exciting news, after having carried this package for 13.4 kilometres, one hour and 20 minutes of running with this package, <laughs> Ah, oh, my cat flashbacks to Kribgog! A sudden gust of wind ripped my cap from my head oh, my and down over the edge. The hat has gone! I got it, I got it. We're getting very close to the location where the package is to be delivered. I'm sure you can guess what it is by now. Well, amazingly, the door was just unlocked. The top was posted. Well, there we go. Package delivered. Quick plug, you can email me, of course, a size request for a top at thisisjogon at gmail.com. And then I was rejoined. Well, look who it is. Don't you let me just run once solo. I what? thought you were lost. I'll send you that. You know what's lost? Party. Never get lost. What are you talking about? Get lost all the time. Finally, the 10 mile mark was in sight. That brings us in at a total of 80 kilometers or 50 miles. That's five days done, but this is just the beginning. I'm Harry. Go for that run. And this is Jog On. If you've watched this far and 500k is something that sparks your imagination, we've set up a website, 500k.co.uk, where for now you can simply register your interest.